Hey guys, meet Ronald Chris Tomer here on this Saturday. Let's take a look around this morning. Let's go up to BC. So this is Revelstoke. New snow over the last 24 to 48 hours, looking at probably, what, 5 to 7 inches there. And you'll have more. There's additional snow coming today, likely into tomorrow as well, depending on your elevation. Uh, and you can see it right there. Look at the air temps. So on the summit, it's below freezing, but it's warmer than freezing at the base, just as expected. So very elevation dependent. You're in the flow right now. All right, so this is Ski Santa Fe down in New Mexico. Uh, a beautiful view. They've just got some work to do, but uh, they do have some additional snow on the way. I'm thinking maybe three inches on Sunday tomorrow. I think we'll see another storm system roll through that area. I mean, but it's a, it's a beautiful view. You can see they're blowing snow off the Santa Fe Express down here. Um, got a nice note from uh, Chef Francisco Roca down there saying, hey, you got to show uh, Santa Fe. So there you go. Look at that. Beautiful stuff. Um, let's go to Arapahoe Basin here. Up on the Continental Divide, the Front Range High Peaks of Colorado. I mean, it is a spectacular morning. It is clear out there with some of that morning light. There's Breckenridge in the background. Clearly, we need a lot of snow. And this is a southern aspect here, this Montezuma Bowl. So it's, it, 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 you're always going to see a little bit of that melting uh, and that evaporative process um, sublimation there on those southern uh, aspects. But a really nice view. I do have three, four, five inches on the way for Sunday with the next storm system, and I'll show you that. Here's radar. So it's a split flow right now, as I've been saying the last few days. The trajectory with a lot of the moisture is up here into the Pacific Northwest and BC. The other trajectory is down here into the uh, the southern tier. And so you've got a lot of storms that are kind of moving in this direction. You can see the spin here coming out of SoCal. Even some precip up here around Vegas, Mount Charleston, uh, Flagstaff. There's a, some additional snow in the forecast for the Arizona Snowball area. And then eventually this low will move towards Albuquerque, Ski Santa Fe, Angel Fire, and Taos, and also southwest Colorado um, in the coming days. So a uh, look at the water vapor satellite imagery. So whites and blues, your moisture, that's one low. And then the other uh, trajectories up here into the Pacific Northwest. But unfortunately, with that kind of a pattern, that leaves a lot of Montana, southern Idaho, Oregon, northern California, Nevada, northern Utah um, in the dry sandwich in between. Higher pressure sitting right there for several more days. Here are my bullet points. So we've got the split flow, and the next flow is exiting SoCal and Arizona into Arizona and eventually New Mexico. The other part of the flow is into the Pacific Northwest, and it still looks more active after Thanksgiving, especially into that first part of December. Best odds of accumulating snow are right here for Colorado, Tahoe, Utah, Idaho, Wyoming, Montana, and interior BC. So for example, in Utah, it's going to be a week before we see anything significant. In fact, 29 into 30 looks heavy. That's with the pattern flip that's coming. And then again into early uh, December. So that's how you read it. There's that Sunday storm coming through New Mexico and Colorado with light to moderate accumulations on 1123. Here's the forecast radar. So we'll start this up today at lunchtime, Saturday, November 22nd. One flow, two flows right there. All right, let me push this into the future. All right, here is the dinner hour. So this is 5 a.m. on Sunday, November 23rd. There's our area of low pressure, and you can see snow south of I-70 in Colorado, Taos, Ski Santa Fe, Angel Fire, Arizona Snow Bowl, all included. And then, of course, you've got precip up here with snow over the high Cascades and BC. Here's the lunch hour. Um... So this is late. This is probably dinner time on Sunday. So what's happening is you've got this area of low pressure that's kind of crossing in this direction. There's a little bit of a wraparound right there um, across Denver. There might be a little bit of snow there south of Denver above 6,000 feet um, of elevation, like Castle Rock, Monument Hill, Black Forest, uh, Pikes Peak District, 
And you could get a little bit of that snow that banks up against Loveland, a basin, Keystone, Winter Park, Eldora. And of course, you're going to have snow in the Southwest Mountains as that crosses. And there's some snow, obviously, up here where you see some of those colors on that forecast radar return for Northwest Montana, Central to Northern Idaho. All right, here is, this is 5 a.m. Um, this is 5 a.m. on Monday, November 24th. Now, this indicates a little bit of snow up here over the Tetons, northwest uh, Montana, and parts of, uh, uh, excuse me, northwest Wyoming, and Yellowstone in those areas. So we'll see if that plays out. It's in and it's out, though. There's lunchtime on Monday. And this is kind of interesting. So this is going to be dinner time on Monday. And you can see as this wave is coming through, it does brush potentially maybe the northern mountains of Colorado. All right, let's go. This is uh, 5 a.m. on Tuesday. Everything is gone. Uh, there we go. So that's where we're going to stop it. Everything is gone. Everything has exited a lot of the Rockies by the November 25th, and we're going to wait after that for the next storm system. So this is the time height forecast for Keystone. Um, so Keystone um, sits up there around Arapaho Basin, just a little bit to, to the west southwest of Arapaho Basin down Loveland Pass. So you're looking at the current moment. This is a slice through the atmosphere. You read in this direction into the future. So essentially the green is what I'm looking for, and that's it right there. This is the key slice of time. Basically the afternoon evening of the 23rd on Sunday, the moisture increases. You can see that in green. The wind increases, the transport wind. These black lines start to ramp up. Uh, essentially, you're looking at a conveyor belt on those isentropic surfaces, those lifting surfaces. And that's going to be the snow all the way into early 24. So between the afternoon of 23rd into the early morning hours of the 24th, that's when we're going to see the snow possibly come through that area. And the pressure surfaces, uh, this is the middle of the atmosphere, pressure anomalies. This is Monday the 24th. There goes our little area of low pressure moving in that direction and also lower pressures uh, up here into the Pacific Northwest, as expected. So this is the 27th. This is Thanksgiving, higher than normal pressures across the West, lower than normal pressures over the East. This is pretty significant right here. This is, this is the 1st of December. This is a very big drop in pressures here. This is probably two to three standard deviations below the 30-year norm. So that's a very deep area of low pressure potentially there. This is a very big area of high pressure. So the two kind of counterweight each other. So if this were to occur and verify late November and early December, much colder, significant cold front, and widespread snow. That's the kind of change that we really need. <clears throat> we need colder air because that just helps the efficiency everywhere of snowmaking and natural snow. So what the jet stream would look like on that day, big amplification in the jet and a big dip here across the west. So that would support that area of low pressure. Uh, these are winds up at about 30,000 feet, steering winds in the atmosphere. Jet stream. Um, okay, let's look at total precipitation here across uh, the west. This is as if everything fell as rain over the next five days. So this takes us um, basically through Thanksgiving Day. So I'm looking for the yellow break point because that's about an inch of liquid. That's about a foot of snow. Um, there are definitely a few areas, but I'll look at the... Look at the targeting. It's really all up into this area north of this line. You're in the dry pocket south of that line, unless you're, you know, in that southern track. But man, that is really dry for California, Nevada, southern Idaho. And initially, it's very dry for a lot of Wyoming and very dry, unfortunately, for northern Utah. Looking at that from a southwest perspective, same thing, five-day total precip. And what this is really seeing is that, that low that we have right now that's tracking through this area, spreading uh, rain and snow. And that takes us through Thanksgiving Day. So here's snow. This is 10 to 1, same time period, five days out. Total rolling accumulation. So anywhere in the deep purple is at least 6 inches. So by the end of the period, that's uh, a lot of the Tetons and Yellowstone. 
northwest Montana, central to northern Idaho, absolutely up here into BC. Wherever you see the bright pink, that's two feet. And where you see those white areas coming out, that's two feet. So bright pink is one foot, white is two feet. That's a lot of the cascades too, where you're looking at six to 12, maybe even more, 12 to 24 inches. Um, here's the southwest vantage point. Uh, and again, it's really just showing what's happening with the low that we're currently tracking as it tracks up in this direction. So deep purple is about six, at least six inches. And there are some pockets of that. Here's my official forecast. So this takes us, this is a grand total by late on the 27th. And again, I pointed this out yesterday, zero for the Wasatch. It's not often that you can say that, especially over uh, a five, six day period. I've got nothing. This is, this is going to be a tough stretch. There are a lot of areas that have more snow than the Wasatch right now that you wouldn't even expect it, like New Mexico, like J Peak, Vermont, Southwest Colorado, not, not unusual there, but I mean, it's zero in Bryan Head. I've got zeros from Ashland, Mount Ashland, all the way down through Mammoth, and the one in Big Bear is happening today. Um, we'll zoom in on Colorado in a second. I've got six, seven, eight inches here, Bridger, Big Sky, Grand Targhee, Jackson Hole, and that's pretty late in the period. Eight to 12 up here, central to northern Idaho. Good numbers up here through interior BC at mid-mountain and higher. Mid-mountain and higher because it's warmer at the base areas, obviously. It's quite a bit warmer. Um, one to two feet up here in the Pacific Northwest. So really good moisture on those high cascades and volcanoes. Zooming into Colorado, grand totals by the end of the day on the close of business on the 27th. Um, so most of this, I'd say pretty much the bulk of this, comes through on Sunday, tomorrow, on the 23rd. Uh, two, three, four, five inches of accumulation. Not a lot here over Vail, Copper, Summit County. Numbers drop off. You're really in between the storm track. Um, five, six, seven, eight inches here across the western slope in southwest Colorado. And that mainly happens on Sunday. Um, this is actually a pretty good flow for Monarch. So I've got you at eight inches. Um, Three, four, five inches. Ski Santa Fe might be closer to three inches. Uh, five is a little optimistic on this. Might be closer to three. So three, four, five, somewhere in there. And LaSalle Mountain and then LaSalle's about five inches. Um, looking at the northeast rolling accumulation over the next four or five days. Um, yeah, some lake effect for sure. You can see those streamers coming off of Lake Erie and Lake, lake Erie and Lake Ontario. And then otherwise, man, that is some light snow up there through Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. There's just not a lot there. Here's my uh, forecast. Totals by the end of business on 1127. Uh, three, four, five inches, J Peak, Tremblant, Whiteface, Stowe, and Mount Washington. That's the core. And what you see over here at Snow Ridge is a, a lot of that is lake effect. Some of it's probably going to be rain. We'll see. But about five inches there. Uh, three over Mount Snow, one or less everywhere else. Um, should we do plumes? Again, these are, these are snow plumes, 10 to 15 day snow, uh, total snow forecast. Now, these are ensemble runs, so you're looking at many, many runs, uh, just with tw slight tweaks at the onset of these models. And so these, it tends to, tends to, uh, preclude and exclude a lot of the extreme parts of these. So you really get means these that's what that ensemble mean is and so this is mount washington there's not a lot of snow in that forecast there's no question j peak at least right now it's a very quiet stretch through about the 28th with just a few inches of accumulation jackson wyoming it is a really tough period right now through about thanksgiving with barely anything and it's just it's just too warm and dry right now. Now, this indicates potentially once we get past Thanksgiving that things start to ramp up because what we need in Jackson is just colder air. I mean, we need the colder air along with bigger storm systems. And in particular, a west-northwest flow would really be good uh, in the forecast. Here's Berthoud Pass. Again, Sunday brings us a little bit of snow there. Um, 
but then potentially a better shift in the pattern after Thanksgiving. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this uh, this mountain weather update. Let's end on the western forecast. Again, grand totals through the 27th, split flow for most of that time. Uh, things probably turn more active after Thanksgiving. Thanks for tuning in here. Always appreciate it. Take care and have a great day.